So we've been having some severe thunderstorms here in the forest garden with torrential rain, a uh, couple inches of rain in the last 24 hours and a lot of flooding and runoff and you know surface water and a lot of that is captured by our passive irrigation system which includes these swales here on this one slope and this is kind of the largest swale that we have and you know it filled with water pretty quickly and then percolated down into the soil and into the berm into the mound downslope um, so that water is now groundwater um, and is pacified and stored in the ground um, you know it's absorbing pretty quickly and then you can kind of see how over here on this newer section uh, which hasn't revegetated yet the water hasn't actually absorbed fully so you can kind of see that effect right now um, you know where the grass and other vegetation has grown back the water has absorbed much more quickly and is now stored in the ground so and then up here this middle swale um, which is completely revegetated and uh, you know kind of on its way to being a diverse meadow with lots of grasses and uh, herbaceous perennials there's good absorption you know this swale had a few inches of water in it uh, during the latest downpour and all that water is absorbed into the ground already and then you can kind of see the swale continues along into the more wooded area of the forest garden here kind of the zone two as we head into the zone one which is the most intensive cultivation um, and then this part of the forest garden is zone one um, you know kind of the most cultivated like i was saying has this intricate series of smaller swales that feed into you know little spillways but then there are these little basins along the way like my dog is standing in one um, so when that fills it kind of spills over down into this next one right here which is a little bit bigger and holds a little bit more water and then you know it's making its way down but also across roughly on contour so here's another little micro basin that's surrounded by these beds uh, we've got a rhubarb bed over here um, and then the path kind of goes over this subtle mound down to where my dog is but the basins kind of this micro swale system continues along in this direction and this is a level swale So that's a level area and then it spills over here but i want to make it go into the pond so i need to be a little bit more deliberate about that overflow because once it goes into the pond and then the pond overflows that goes under this bridge into this basin here which can hold a pretty good amount of water and then when that is full it very passively runs underneath this bridge little footbridge and into this dense patch of milkweed um, you know other herbaceous perennials and some woody perennials um, and just kind of absorbs into the hugel culture which is a seven-year-old uh, mound of logs so there's like soft wood turning into a sponge down there and that absorbs tons of water So all the runoff during a big flooding event from this whole zone one slope, any extra water makes its way into this final lowest point, which is this hugel culture. And then if there really is a torrential hundred or thousand year flood, there is a potential for this hugel culture to also have a spillway in the future down into this very subtle pond little basin right here next to goat rock and then if that overflows 
it just goes out onto the field. So that's kind of our system here in the forest garden. Those are the swales up there and there's pipe crossings and then there are overflows on either side and some of that comes down and out here. So it's pretty interesting. Um, you know, as the vegetation grows, we'll be able to kind of increase the capacity and start to bank more soil and then also absorb tons of extra water as part of our passive irrigation system. So anyway, I'll try and keep it short. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, and I'll try and make more videos sometime soon. All right, have a good one.